Let me tell you how one of the worst downwinders I've had in recent times convinced me that foil drives are amazing. I was invited by the foil drive guys to come down to Adelaide to do a downwinder. We wanted to see how the foil drive would work on a Barracuda style board. So I took my AMR Sultan down with me. We were lucky enough that on the third day, there appeared to be some wind on the way. Dom and I had spent the two days previous foiling around, having a good old time in the waves. The foil drive himself. Ow! But the third day was supposed to be game day. Wind. Given how good the forecast looked, I chose a small foil. This was mistake number one. I also mounted my mast in the wrong position, which I don't know why I did that, but nonetheless, that's what I did. I've got greasy feet from my hard boots. That's disgusting. <laughs> Straight away, I struggled. Foil was too fast for the bumps. My mast was out of position. I had the extra weight of the box at the back. Things were looking bad. The first four kilometers was a full on pump fest, even six kilometers. We also couldn't keep our distance from the coast. We were getting pushed in consistently. And when you fall over, you'd have to motor back out to get to where the bumps got a little bit better. You can hear on the mic, there's no wind. The wind has completely died. And with it, the bumps are dying too. It's getting harder and harder to pump between flat sections. If I had been on my PNG 1300 or 1150, I would have been okay. It would have been fine. And if my mast had been in the right position. But this is the lesson. Things don't always go to plan in downwinding. And when you're at my level, I'm not one of the experts. I'm definitely not one of the best by any measure. I am very much still, in my opinion, in the beginner stage. Things go wrong and they go wrong really quickly and really annoyingly. So by the six kilometer mark, my back seized up, and I mean completely seized up. Come on back. Ah! Who needs one? Ah! I could barely stand on the board, and when I was up on foil, I couldn't twist to get the foil to turn. At this stage, I also realized that I hadn't done up my bolts properly. So there's two bolts that go into the fuse for the axis, fuselage, and then there's two bolts that go into the Cedrus mast. And those two bolts were loose. I didn't check them. So I had a wobbly foil, which was causing issues, causing me to fall, and my back was seized up. I then told the boys that I was gonna go in, but my pride was saying, no, keep going. So at around the eight kilometer mark, I was still persevering and the boys assured me that we were gonna have a good run. And they were right. There was this really great section of the coast where I had some really good sections and I thought we were in the clear. I'm a super Saiyan, baby, like my name was Goku. Feeling too good, real good, yeah, I'm so true. Remember bad days used to have, yeah, I felt blue. Now I'm up high in the sky like, ooh, ooh. Mama said if I wanted, I need to have a plan. Get up off that corner, see the world, boy, you the man. And if I show you the steps, I think you understand. And I was up about two like kilometers. Right. And then I smacked some seaweed. By this point, we were about the two hour mark and I was completely exhausted. I made the call to go in. I only made the 12 kilometers out of 16, maybe even less than 12. Given the foil choice that I had made didn't match the conditions at all, I would have only gotten about two kilometers. And there was actually somebody out there who was a very good rider on Barracuda on a, on a fairly small foil who turn back at the two kilometer mark. Without the four wheel drive, I wouldn't even gotten four kilometers. The second thing was we kept getting pushed into the coast. I would have spent a lot of time belly paddling to get back out wider, uh, given everything else that was going on, which would have been even more energy. 
then number three obviously would be I'd have to stand up and try and paddle up in shitty bumps. I think I did about 30 paddle ups in that 12 kilometer stretch. It was really tough going. If I had to continually paddle back out, continually paddle up, paddle up after hitting seaweed, paddle up after my foil was wobbling, it would have been a total disaster. There's just so many reasons that this would have been worse. It was still bad, but it could have been so much worse. It was n not what I wanted or expected. But when I reflected on that downwinder, it could have been a 10 out of 10 shit, but it was like a six out of 10. And I actually had sections where I had great fun and the bumps got really good. But by that point, I was too fatigued. In a normal setting without the foil drop, I wouldn't even have gotten on foil again. I honestly wouldn't have. I know I wouldn't have. The whole point of this video, the argument I'm making is that foil drive means that you get to squeeze whatever fun you can out of a session. If I hadn't gotten to the eight kilometer mark, I never would have had the good two kilometers. I would have had no good bumps. All I would have had was a paddle out into disappointing bumps and a paddle back. Was the foil drive downwinder a failure? Yes, which is what made it a success. It actually, if I had had a beautiful run, like just up and then off I go and no come downs, I wouldn't have actually got to sort of re-experience what a beginner would experience on a downwinder. So because I was on too small a foil, my ship was wobbly, my back seized up, I got to re-experience what it's like to be in that learner stage again. For me, uh, I probably, I probably won't use the foil drive for the Sultan. What I will do is put it on my prone board and prone downwind because watching those boys do that was great. If the bumps are right, you can make sure you're on the right foil. For me, that is the place that I'll probably use it. But if you're learning and you want the extra safety and extra battery, get on the big board because if you're on the big board, you use bugger all battery on your paddle ups. I know that once I'm up in normal circumstances, I'll be fine. So that's probably the way I'll use it. But if I was learning, I'd have no hesitation in getting uh, your sub board and whacking a foil drive on and knowing that you can get up in all conditions or at least motor back in. The other thing is just motoring out to where the wind is. You know, that's a, that's a lot of work sometimes just trying to paddle out to where the wind line and the bumps start so anyway that is my Adelaide downwind trip I'm going to do some more foil drive videos this is sort of just a series that I'll be doing they've given me one to demo and I've just done a prone session this morning in the waves I'm going to do some flat water paddle up training with it and show you the way that I think I'll integrate it into what I do as a foiler mainly prone and downwinding, trying to stay uh, pump fit through winter where we have no waves. And I'm sort of a bit sick of dock starting. My sincere thanks to Dom. Queen in a rainbow. Breakthrough. <laughs> who babysat me the entire trip. Paul and Ben uh, for having me down. Caitlin for all the support in the background. And Jamie, Trav and Scotty for the downwinder as well as everybody else who assisted. And I had an epic time, super nice people. Foil Drive is a company that I'm really excited by. The people and the minds that are working on issues, it's so exciting and I can't wait to see what they come up with. And I'm happy to be along with the journey. Uh, as best I can so happy foiling and I'll see you on the next one peace the biggest takeaway I've had from this trip so far is I would have rather much rather just avoided all that downwind suffering and bought a foil drive like I'm, anno I'm annoyed it would be easier to go to work for a couple of weeks save some money buy your four drive rather than all the bullshit I had to go through to land a downwind and I have no shame in saying that I don't care what the elite paddlers would say the goal is to get on foil and have fun going downwind and if I had a foil assist I would have been able to do that probably within a week <laughs> Hey bro, you
you really should take your GoPro home with you when you leave Adelaide, like, you know. Hey. Chad, oh, we have 1%. One, <laughs> 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 it's quite a view there. <laughs> <laughs> You're on one bar. <laughs> 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 Didn't cite me a home video. <laughs> <laughs>